Hi, welcome to Numeric's video blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Continuing on our series on negative rates, let's turn to the other side of rates that continue to be poised to rise. And with that, let's take a look at the U.S. Joining me today is Vice President of Business Development here at Numeric's, Udi Sella. Udi, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jim, for having me. So uh, we're now a couple months after uh, the first rate hike, and there's clearly some conversation about uh, rates continuing to rise here in the U.S. Um, over uh, the next couple of months. But uh, the question that I want to start with you is, what are you starting to see in the Fed Fund's futures market? So, uh, it was actually very serious since the beginning of the year because uh, uh, during the first like, three months, we've seen a uh, weakening of the equity market. As a result, at some point, the market was pricing zero rate hikes during 2016 uh, and beginning in 2017. So just as a reference, that in Euroland, uh, basically the, the, the equivalent contract shows first hike like in 50 months, plus 50, plus 100. And recently, what we are seeing, uh, what, what the Fed funds imply, is the probability of something like 63 percent for one or two uh, for one rate hike at least this year. And when we listen to uh, some Fed officials, we are starting to see over the last few weeks that they are preparing the market actually for up to two months this year. And what we see in fact, what we see is that the, uh, the Fed, Fed officials are trying to prepare the market to adjust to the new rate environment. And this is very different as opposed to the European Central Bank in, in this uh, the Fed market not as well. And we've seen that twice with the folks that you can monitor with that 65% probability that's coming out of uh, the Fed Fund future, any indication as how much? I think, you know, we saw 25 bips. Um, do we, are, is it your expectation that we're going to continue to see a slow, measured um, movement upward? Absolutely. I think that we'll see some shots of 25 basis points each. Probably my guess would be June and the December that we'll see some shots. I think that every time uh, the Fed would want to measure, the impact on inflation. At the same time, we also see that there is a recovery in commodity prices, right? If WTI had hit uh, at some point $47 a barrel, we're now about 40 So that, uh, that's another reason to think that, you know, inflation can start picking up again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think the Fed is doing a tremendous job carrying the market. So, uh in terms, uh, focusing now on uh, FX and FX strategies, uh, you know, your, your wheelhouse. We've got, uh, God can't even count anymore on how many countries are, have gone negative. You've got a rising U.S. If we look at Latin America, we've got tons of uh, high rates in Brazil and things of that nature. You know, from an FX perspective, what are you thinking about when you're looking at the markets and what are you seeing in terms of uh, uh, derivative strategies? Okay, so first of all, in terms of trends, you mentioned the emerging markets. So I just mentioned a few minutes ago the, uh, the recovery of commodity prices. This is having a positive impact on, on commodity currencies like the Canadian dollar, like the Australian dollar, even the South uh, Africa, which was, the rand was heavily hit. And therefore, we see, we see some kind of a recovery. At the same time, the U.S. dollar, given uh, lack of... Uh, announcement of the European Central Bank, actually the US dollar has weakened a bit. So this is also helping uh, emerging market currencies uh, to recover. And given that the uh, things to the pace of rate hikes in the US will be moderate, the interest rate differential will not be uh, as significant. I also think that the Fed is uh, concerned with the dollar this discount because again it will have to uh, uh, this is low inflation and it will have to be excellent. So I think uh, it's a very balanced game but at the end of the day I still come back. So it's interesting to mention the bill because the uh, the, the Brazilian uh, round has actually uh, strengthened quite a bit and the interesting reason is that the market is constant that the fact the president will have to be this is kind of insane, but, uh, but this is the only reason that I've come back to yeah. So, Udi, uh, final question for you. Um, 
taking a little bit of a longer term view, let's uh, and by long term I mean three whole months from now. Uh, what's on the watch list? Is it oil? Is it gold? Is it commodities in general? Is it rates? What what's keeping you up at night? I think that the next interesting thing that will happen in the market is the uh, the vote in, in the U, in the UK about the, the Brexit. So already we've seen that you know the, the British pound has weakened a bit against the US dollar and against the euro, and I think this will determine uh, this will, will have a major impact. And also, given the, the sad, tragic events uh, in Europe recently, um, I think that if uh, Britain uh, would uh, leave uh, the European Union, other countries will fall. keep all eyes on that. And Udi, as uh, events continue to unfold, we're obviously going to want to talk to you and get your opinions again. Uh, and uh, we always appreciate your insights. So thank you so much for joining us, Udi. We always want to talk about the things that you want to talk about. So please uh, chat back us at on Twitter, at NX Analytics, and stay up to date on everything that is Numerics on LinkedIn and at Numerics.com. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Thank you for joining.